Hey everybody, welcome to the newest episode of The Bearded Gamer Show. As always, I am your host, with an oh-so-awesome beard, Chris Arnone, The Bearded Gamer. Straight into good news, bad news. All right, so we'll start off good news, bad news with a little bit of bad news. And once again, coming back to the PlayStation Vita. Now, this isn't anything that's on Sony. It, it, it's really about the sales numbers. Now, MediaCreate, a company that tracks uh, Japanese game sales data, uh, has brought out their numbers for the opening weekend for the PlayStation Vita in Japan. Now, they're estimating about 500,000 units were shipped, 325,000 were sold. That's only about a 65% sell-through. Uh, so it's really kind of disappointing first weekend sales. Usually with most consoles, it's really hard to find them because they end up selling out. They just didn't ship quite enough. In this case, it's actually really easy. You can still probably go to any store in Japan and find a PlayStation Vita. Uh, now, analysts are blaming both a high price point and a lack of system sellers. And a high price point, of course, in comparison to the 3DS, which is you know $70 cheaper for you know, another portable console. Uh, I think had the 3DS still been the $250 price point, competitive price point, uh, you'd be seeing uh, better sales numbers, I imagine. But then again, the 3DS would also still be lagging. So, all right, into some good news. Now, Skyrim has recently seen a new patch for the PC. Now, this new patch adds four gigabyte RAM support. Now, personally, I've got a really high-end computer. I'm not seeing much of a difference. There's been a mod out for a while that enables four gigabyte uh, RAM, but I really couldn't see much of a difference. Did some screenshots, looked at them pretty closely, didn't see much. But for people with more uh, middle performance computers, they're going to notice a big difference when they can now use four gigabytes instead of two. Now, of course, I've got to piggyback this with, well, but that's not the best news we could ask for when it comes to a Skyrim patch. PS3 is still seeing significant, significant issues. Uh, I play on PC, my good friend Bo plays on PS3, and he's really seen it. Plus, he's have, had to disable his autosave, which means once in a while when Skyrim crashes, he'll lose you know, 45 minutes an hour because he's not thinking about saving all the time without his autosave on. So, really, while this is good news, a little bitty piece of good news for PC gamers, I think, I, I really, really hope that Bethesda is working on a patch for the PS3 to fix their very large problems that almost make the game unplayable once you've logged enough hours. All right, some straight up I'm just going to say news, because it's kind of hard to define. If you're a 360 gamer, it's good news. If you're not a 360 gamer, it's kind of disappointing. Um, Microsoft and Square Enix are teaming up to introduce a new exclusive weapon for Final Fantasy XIII Part II. It'll be a DLC weapon. They're not saying it's going to cost money, but I imagine it's probably going to be free, because they're going to try to entice people to come over and buy it on the 360. Uh, now... You know, Microsoft has had a lot of success with exclusivity with DLC. You look at you know the Fallout games, uh, Call of Duty. You know the, the numbers are much much bigger on 360 in large part due to these exclusivity deals when it comes to DLC. Now, no word if this like those games will be a timed exclusivity that'll later be available on PS3. But you know it's hard to say. But I think what this also shows is there's a lot of faith in Final Fantasy 13. Part 2. Now, there's already one review that's come out for the game with Famitsu. It's the only review in existence. Gave it a perfect score. Uh, you know, so it's hard to say. You know, I was, like most people, disappointed with Final Fantasy 13. So I'd be really curious to see if they read all their re reviews of 13 and really made the improvements to make it a great game and live up to the Final Fantasy name. All right. Finish off with some more good news. Gears of War 3 is getting a new DLC called Phoenix Rising. It's going to be out on January 17th. It's going to be 800 Microsoft points. Now, there's a whole bunch in this. First off, there's five new map packs, Academy, Anvil, Depths, Escalation, and The Slab. Now, there's also going to be two new character skins for both sides of the field. But then the big news is they're introducing a new progression system. Now, this is very similar to the Call of Duty Prestige, where players, you know, real core players that have gotten up to level 100 in multiplayer can then re-up. You go back to level 1, uh, all your stats reset, but by re-upping, you get access to a bunch of weapons that would not be otherwise available. And you can re-up, at this point, up to three times. Uh, so... You know, that should add a lot more replay and a lot more value to players who are just dedicated Gears of War online players. There's just a lot more there for you. All right, guys. Now, about to head into the reviews roundup. And, you know, it's coming to the end of the year. There's not a lot of reviews anymore. Everything that's come out has been reviewed. 
And, you know, you're, you've got maybe just a little bit of holiday gift buying to get. You know, Christmas is just around the corner. What do you get that special gamer in your life? Well, I'm going to do a reviews roundup going over the top 10 highest reviewed games of the year. So if your gamer loved one doesn't have one of these, that's what you should go and buy. Check it out. Welcome to a very special reviews roundup powered by Gamer Review. The Year in Reviews, highlighting the 10 highest reviewed games of the year. Coming in at number 10 is Super Mario 3D Land for the Nintendo 3DS. Brent Gallietti said, They say good things come to those who wait. For those who anxiously awaited Mario to set foot on the 3DS, the reward is another fantastic entry to the proud Mario series. Super Mario 3D Land shows that after all these years, Mario still has the magic touch. And this enjoyable little romp is a great showcase for what the 3DS can really do. It is a must-own for any 3DS owner, any platforming fan, and anyone who enjoys fun. Brent gave Super Mario 3D Land a 9.1 out of 10. Since this list is so packed in, there are several ties. The first comes to us as a tie for number 8. Ties will be listed alphabetically. So the first is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D for the Nintendo 3DS. Daniel Sherstrom said, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D is the first game that I honestly feels justifies owning a 3DS. The system has some other great titles, but Zelda is the first to really hammer home just how much the capabilities of this new system can add to a game. Beautiful graphics, effective motion control, and touchscreen use that eliminates a lot of monotony all layered on top of an already top-of-the-class game. Even if you've already beaten it 10 times, I would still recommend Ocarina 3D because it is easily the definitive version of the game. Despite a few issues like the odd frame rate hitch and music quality that should have been upgraded, this game has done the improbable and exemplified the benefits that a 3D world can bring to a video game twice. Daniel gave The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D a 9.2 out of 10. The other number 8 ranked game is Mass Effect 2 for the PlayStation 3. Nick Pantazzi said, Mass Effect 2 is an awesome game. It doesn't matter where you play it, that won't change, but you will lose a significant portion of the experience on PS3. Unfortunately, the much boasted Mass Effect 3 engine isn't really improving the original game. While it's sharper, the performance takes a noticeable hit. The only real big setback for buying the game on PS3 is the lack of the original Mass Effect. Mass Effect Genesis is simply bad, and it doesn't give PS3 owners the connection to the universe or the chance to see the decisions they've made in the original Mass Effect mature. Coupled with a slightly inflated price for the late port, it doesn't quite reach the levels that should be expected for the PS3 version. Mass Effect 2 stands on its own as an incredibly fun and well-designed game, but if you can play it on another system with a Mass Effect save file to import, do that instead. Nick still gave Mass Effect 2 for the PlayStation 3 a 9.2 out of 10. Didn't get enough ties with number 8? Well, there's a three-way tie for number 5. Again, we'll go alphabetically. The first number 5 is Fight Night Champion for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Chris Matalich said, Fight Night Champion is the pinnacle of the franchise. If you plan on jumping in the ring for the first time, or coming back for your fifth rematch with over 50 licensed boxers, including Ali, Tyson, Pacquiao, and the infamous Butterbean, Champion is the best the sport has to offer, making it a worthy contender for your $60. Chris gave Fight Night Champion a 9.3 out of 10. The next game tied for number 5 is Gears of War 3 for Xbox 360. Nick Pantazzi said, I'm not ashamed to say that I have not been the biggest fan of the Gears franchise in the past. I didn't hate it, but it didn't draw me in as much as some other shooter franchises did. I found the pacing too slow for my taste, and the game was too dependent on heavy cover usage. Gears of War 3 has absolutely won me over. Not only did I enjoy the lengthy and varied single-player campaign, but the multiplayer has sucked me in and I'm here to stay. It's not a perfect game, but it is an incredible accomplishment and full of fun for almost any action game fan. Gears of War revolutionized the third-person shooter, and Gears of War 3 is everything a conclusion to such a powerful trilogy could ask for. Nick gave Gears of War 3 
a 9.3 out of 10. The last game locking in the number 5 position is Little Big Planet 2 for PlayStation 3. Carl Kebke said, Little Big, Big Planet 2 is everything a sequel should be. It stays true to the vision of the first game while adding feature upon feature. The graphics are improved, the gameplay additions are all fun, and the new editing features will allow L the LBP community to give us lowly freeloaders great levels to play for years to come. That said, the vehicle gameplay in the story campaign felt a little weak, and the story campaign still only takes six hours to finish. Sackboy is once again the king of Play Create Share, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Carl gave Little Big Planet 2 a 9.3 out of 10. Standing alone at number 4 is Crisis 2 for Xbox 360. The PC and PS3 reviews were separate. I reviewed this one and said, Crisis 2 is a spectacular game in nearly every way. Accurate, innovative gameplay combines nicely with the best presentation the Xbox 360 has ever seen for a truly incredible experience. Halo and Gears of War, you're both on notice. There's a new contender on Microsoft's little console, and its name is Crisis 2. I gave Crisis 2 a 9.4 out of 10. But wait, there's more ties. Two games tied for the number two spot on our list. First is Batman Arkham City for PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and PC. Daniel Sherstrom said, So essentially, this is the superhero game that every gamer should own. The story, combat, and stealth sequences make this one of the most tightly honed games in years, whether you're a Batman fan or not. Layer in the detective work, the masterfully realized open world, the dozen-plus classic villains, the stellar production values, and the superb replay value, and you've got a front-runner for Game of the Year right here. Batman Arkham City is so good at what it does that it almost edges past being a video game towards simply being called a Batman simulator. Arkham Asylum may have been the Batman game we deserved, but Arkham City is the one you need right now. Daniel gave Batman Arkham City a 9.5 out of 10. The other game coming in at number 2 for 2011 is The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword for Nintendo Wii. Alex St. Amour said, It's weird to say it, since there have been so many great titles in the series, but The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword is the definitive Zelda experience. It's exactly what we dreamed about playing 25 years ago. The controls are near perfect, the presentation is breathtaking, and you will be enjoying this fantastic title for many, many hours. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword is a milestone in gaming history. Not only does it move the classic formula that we've all grown up with forward, it also makes us, the players, feel even more attached to the cast than ever before, and finally allows us to feel like we're a part of the experience. Alex gave The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword a 9.5 out of 10. It's time for the number one, highest reviewed game of 2011. If you hadn't guessed it already, the game taking the crown with 2011's highest review and the highest review ever given on Gamer Review, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC. Nick Pantazzi said, Skyrim is a transcendent experience. It may not be perfect, but it excels in almost every aspect of design. There are games that you play and there are games that you experience. This is the latter. It sucks you in, and you will get lost in its depths. So go buy Skyrim, then call your friends and your boss, and warn them that they won't hear from you for a while. Nick gave The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim a 9.7 out of 10. There you have it, the 10 must-own, highest-reviewed games of 2011. Be sure to read the full reviews for these and many other games on GamerReview.VGCharts.com. Dot com. So it's time for Nerd TV, and I have to go with this wonderful, wonderful film made by the wonderful, wonderful people at Blue Goggles Films. Now they've taken two of my favorite things, Christmas and Batman, Arkham City. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they did. Uh, they made this great video call, called A Very Arkham City Christmas. And before you're like, oh, the bearded gamer, he's just stealing other people's videos to make money, grumble, grumble. I actually had the express written consent of Blue Goggles Films to show this one. That said, I do encourage you to go to YouTube, search for Blue Goggles Films, or A Very Arkham 
City Christmas and watch this. I mean, you're going to want to show your friends anyway. Give them some likes, give them some views, give them some love. They've made a fantastic video that I guarantee will make the Grinchiest Grinch just alive with holiday cheer. Check it out, and we'll see you next time. Too close. <laughs> We're so quick. I know. Did you see what he did to Larry? Oh, don't even talk about it. I'm gonna throw up thinking about it. What about Myron? Oh my God, I felt that one. Did you see what happened to Eugene? Can I be honest with you? I try not to look at Eugene in battle. No. So Eugene thought a car door would make a good shield, right? Of course. Wrong. The bat freaking. Punches through the glass, glass flying everywhere, and then he takes the door and starts beating him over the head like a damn pinata with. Oh man! I can't believe we got away. He's here. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Come on. Come on, friend. me. Do you think it's him? Oh, no, probably not. He's got better things to do than deal with us, right? Here I thought we'd get to spend a nice, quiet little Christmas together. I blame Strange. Oh, speaking of... I got you a little something. Dougie, you shouldn't have. Come on, open it. What? I've always wanted a set of these. I know. Oh, man, this is awesome. Well, I guess I could give you your present now, too. Do you have to give me anything? Douglas. I know I didn't have to, but I saw something and I thought you might like it, so... Doug? Gary. Gary? Hey! Gary, wake oh, up! Oh, oh, where am I? Oh. Hey. At least we get to spend the holidays together. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Merry Christmas, Gary. Happy holidays, Doug. <laughs> <laughs>